Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today these are the four things that came across my desk that I felt to be newsworthy and worth sharing with the Ravens block. First thing up, somber, somber, even more sad news to go on top of what happened Sunday in the AFC Championship game. The bright spot of the AFC Championship game, the defense in the second half, the leader of that defense is now the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Mike McDonald has accepted a job with the Seattle Seahawks. He's the new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, replacing Pete Carroll, the longtime coach. It's crazy how Seattle Seahawks go from a 72-year-old coach to a 36-year-old coach, cutting that time frame in half. And it's crazy when I think about the, the age dynamic and you know how much of a um, cerebral coach that Mike McDonald is. And I think about, you know, the taste of football knowledge that I have and Mike McDonald's 10 years younger than me. And I feel like my football acumen is, is okay, but I don't think it's to the capacity of Mike McDonald. And he's, you know, 36. He's the youngest, the youngest head coach in the NFL right now. So salute to you, Mike. Um, don't know if he's gonna post the staff like Big Brother Harbaugh is doing, but um, it's well deserved, man. I said it multiple times on my streams. The defense never folded all year long. I waited for a game for them to fold. They kind of folded a little bit versus the Rams, but the offense did their job that game and helped us out and with the Tyler Wallace punt return. But for the most part, over the course of 17, 18, 19 games, the defense never folded. Had the triple crown, which is unprecedented. First in takeaways, first in sacks, first in scoring, uh, defensive scoring. So, I, as you know, you can't be mad for at the guy. He deserved it. He's the hot name. And when your name is hot, you got to jump on the opportunity. So, um, and if you don't follow Mike's career, he was an assistant with us. He went to Michigan for a year, uh, came back as the DC when we got rid of Wink. Year one, had some ups and downs early, especially the Miami game. After that, got it together and has been on point ever since. This year was an amazing year for him. So hats off to you, Mike. Salute, congrats, and um, thank, you, thank you for what you did for the Ravens. And um, there's no deserving person than Mike McDonald to lead the Seattle Seahawks. the second story you know it's mock draft season and a lot of people a lot of different outlets are producing mock drafts and so when I see different ones I'll talk about them and kind of who they have projected at different spots for the Baltimore Ravens and if you don't know we have the 30th pick so I haven't done a lot of prospects yet so far uh, the only two I've done so far is uh, Olu Fananu I think that's how you pronounce his name from Penn State and um, Marvin Harrison Jr., the wide receiver from Ohio State. Those are the only two guys I've done so far. But I do know some of the bigger name prospects. And so in this in particular mock draft, it's from CBS Sports, they projected a guy that I do know something about and that I would love to have on the Ravens next year if this comes to fruition. It is Keon Coleman. CBS mock draft, Keon Coleman to us, uh, the wide receiver from Florida State. And I think Keon's like 6'3", 6'4", uh, extremely athletic, um, so athletic that he was a punt returner too for Florida State. In 2023, he had 50 catches for 658 yards and 11 touchdowns and a number of highlight-worthy catches. So if you don't know who Keon Coleman is, search him on YouTube, go check his highlight packages out, and you know a breakdown will be coming on the Sip the Tally channel, on both of them. So I really would love to have Keon Coleman on the team to help Lamar have another weapon to go to, uh, some jump ball stuff, some contested catch stuff. Keon Coleman would fit that big body receiver that we all been clamoring for in Baltimore. All right, next up, the Tennessee Titans have claimed another Baltimore defensive coach for their own. The Tennessee Titans have made Denard Wilson, the Ravens DB coach, 
their defensive coordinator. Why is Denard Wilson so hot in the streets? Just think about it. He was a defensive back coach for the Baltimore Ravens. All pro, Kyle Hamilton. Geno Stone, second in the league in interceptions with seven as a backup. Brandon Stevens, best year of his career. Marlowe regressed a little bit, but I think that's because of injury. And then you had Marcus Williams, who you don't hear much about, but he was hurt as well also. But led the NFL in defensive points against and takeaways, whether it be interceptions, sacks, or whatever the case may be. When you put up numbers like that, when you put up stats like that, your staff is going to be looked at as a whole. Mike's gone as a head coach. His assistants are now getting opportunities to be DCs. So what's, what I'm thinking is going to happen, and it's something that they said on the insides yesterday. They are saying that Mike McDonald is looked at as the, off the defensive version of uh, Kyle Shanahan. And you see all these different guys coming from the Kyle Shanahan tree. I think you're going to start to see people fall off the Mike McDonald tree. Looking at Denard Wilson, you look at some other guys for Baltimore, you know, depending on who they poach or who, we, who Baltimore now even slots up to be the defensive coordinator. So, Tennessee got a new coach. They pulled Denard Wilson to be the D.C. We'll see how that goes. And last but not least, the 2024, I ain't going to say the schedule, but the opponents drop for the Baltimore Ravens. The home games and the away games, no dates yet. Just who we're playing and where we're playing them. The away teams, Kansas City, ironic. Don't really care if we beat them in the regular season, me personally. Dallas Cowboys, which will be a big game. Uh, Jerry World, I plan on attending that one. Pittsburgh Steelers conference game. Um, Cleveland Browns conference game. Cincinnati Bengals conference game. San Diego Chargers, hard bowl. Hard bowl again. Uh, New York Giants. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I possibly will, will, will be attending that one, but Tampa Bay really likes their team, which means the price of their tickets be through the roof, so I don't know if I'm going to attend that one, even though it's close to me. And the Houston Texans, another playoff team that we beat this year, or played this year, and I do plan on attending that one also. And the home games, the Philadelphia Eagles, Broncos, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Buffalo Bills, Raiders, and the Commanders. So, Tell me what games you guys plan on attending other than the home games, I mean the road games, and if you plan on attending the, either one of the games in Texas, holler at me. Maybe we'll get a chance to meet up. And so these are the four things that came across my desk that I felt to be newsworthy on February the 1st, 2024. This is Coach Evans. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Like the video. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop throughout 2024. Peace. As I'm recording this, Zach Orr has been named the defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. The 31-year-old former Raven who recently came back as the linebackers coach, full of fire, full of emotion, a passionate, passionate guy will now lead the Ravens defense since Mike McDonald's departure. Congratulations, Zach. And apparently on another note, while reading Twitter, Mark Andrews saved a woman's life on a flight back to Phoenix today. So shout out to Mark Andrews for doing what he does on a normal basis um, for taking action as a normal citizen. Salute to you, Mark.